So, <clears throat> speaking on, on data retention, uh, one of the most frequent arguments used against mandatory data retention is that rights to privacy and protection of users' telecommunications data for, are violated for preventive security purposes and without any suspicion against them at the time they are saved. So, does the state treat all citizens as potential criminals when imposing mandatory data retention? Are they all under suspicion? Um, in a way, they are not under suspicion. Uh, because, uh, of course, a general data retention is not, cannot be based, cannot be grounded on suspicion. And there is no way that uh, the state may, cons uh, may, may, may regard all um, uh, uh, people, uh, all members of society, all citizens as suspicious. That is not possible. Everybody knows that. And that is what I uh, said is a problem. It's a legal problem, it's a political problem, and it's in particular also a problem um, uh, as regards the organization of um, um, a state and the relationship between a state and citizens. Because when retaining all traffic data, um, there is no ground no legitimate ground to retain these data. You said uh, the state treats all um, citizens perhaps as suspicious, but the state doesn't do that. The state knows, police know, we all know these uh, 200 million Brazilian uh, citizens, they are not suspicious. Uh, they are not, uh, nobody suspects them of having committed a crime. They, but they, um, their rights are interfered with. Yeah? If there was a suspicion, then of course that could be a legitimate ground. But there's no suspicion. Everybody knows that. And that is, for example, something um, the European Court of Justice has um, discussed in its, uh, uh, in its uh, very important decision one and a half years ago, the um, Luxembourg Court of uh, Justice, when the court said that general data retention, as provided in the Directive of the European Union 2006, that is infringing on the uh, um, uh, European Union Charter of Fundamental Rights, and in particular on the uh, right to privacy, and on the right uh, to uh, of, uh, protection of personal data. And it's interesting to see how the court argued. It's interesting to, to look at the arguments of the court. The court said, when it comes to um, considering, on the one hand, the interest of the state in um, effectively implementing criminal law in providing for security on the one hand and the interest of citizens in privacy, in, in, in maintaining their privacy, then there must be some balancing. Of course, I mean, that is important, balance, balancing privacy on the one hand and security or effective law enforcement on the other hand. This is important, that is of course, interest in effective law enforcement, there's uh, legitimate interest in security, there's also legitimate interest in privacy, legitimate interest in the protection of personal data. So, uh, balancing is uh, necessary. However, when looking at general data retention, what happens there? There's no balancing, because there's no, no balancing at all. It's just a general um, a approach which says, in the interest of security, all data will be nothing such as a balance. That's just, uh, just a plain interference, and the European Court said that is not possible. So uh, we have, of course, a legitimate interest in security, but we then have to sort out what 
kind of uh, 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 conditions must be present and what kind of conditions serve as a balance uh, in terms of uh, this interest in privacy, this interest in data protection. And here the court said, of course, uh, data retention cannot be justified with concrete suspicion. If there was a concrete suspicion, there is no problem, because then, of course, I can retain data for this individual case, for this individual cell phone or for uh, I'd, um, an, a certain number of identified cell, phone, so cell phones. But in case of general retention, I need as a minimum um, some legitimate uh, grounds which say that in a certain case re general retention can be justified. And that might be the case, for example, if there is, uh, say, if security uh, security agencies uh, say that there's a uh, risk of terrorist, uh, terrorist uh, violence, then perhaps for a limited region, for a limited number of persons, data might be retained for a limited period of time. But not a general data retention, uh, um, uh, a general, general data retention regime which um, would uh, do away with suspicion and would do away with uh, balancing. So uh, it's, in, it's also interesting because um, the uh, Federal Constitutional Court of Germany in a, it's an old decision of the, in the 1980s in a way um, also uh, 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 focused on this point uh, uh, with another uh, line of arguments, the Federal Constitutional Court of Germany back then said the state should never be allowed to uh, just uh, uh, retain data without knowing for what concrete purpose these data are necessary. So um, <laughs> it's kind of uh, interesting because states, of course, not only police forces are always interested in data. Uh, it's not bad to have data, have information about citizens and so on. And now we don't need them, but perhaps we will need them next year, or in two years, or in five years. So why not collecting everything? And the Federal Constitutional Court back then said that is not a regime which could be, um, which could uh, hold in face of the interest in privacy, the interest of in, uh, data protection, because uh, that would allow the state to uh, collect everything. And then, of course, uh, the privacy right would have no value anymore. There would be no, no weight anymore if the state could, in fact, uh, uh, um, uh, argue uh, we could possibly need these data in two years, five years, seven years. And the same applies not only, of course, to telecommunication data, traffic data. The same, um, of course, applies in principle to uh, the data which come with credit card trans transactions, with bank transactions, with uh, your uh, uh, television set uh, at home, which also uh, produces a lot of data with the uh, electricity data, which uh, allow um, uh, people somewhere to say, ah, she's at home now, because uh, we see that the consumption rate is going up and now it's going down, she's going to bed, and all these data. That is, if it, it all comes together, there's big data. If that would be possible, <laughs> there would be no protection at all. Then we could do away with the privacy right and the right uh, of uh, protection of personal data. So I think uh, that this uh, approach of the European Court of uh, Justice, which says retention as a general, as a as a as a as a, uh, um, a general approach to collecting retaining data, that is not possible. There must be always. Uh, um, on, on the other side, there must be some ground which says that in a certain case, 
uh, retention is justified because of suspicion, because of a certain risk that uh, serious crimes are being committed and so on. But there must be something. No, um, um, uh, 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 no general uh, um, uh, data retention. A bit, uh, perhaps, uh, I mean, I'm, uh, you, you are a bit familiar with uh, German. Uh, there's nothing like uh, that in, in English language. In German language, it's Vorratsdatenspeicherung, Vorratsdaten. Mm -hmm. And that is what uh, the Federal Constitutional Court back then said, is at least at the minimum critical, and which the um, European Court of Justice said that is something that cannot be used as, a, as an instrument. Vorratsdaten, I mean, you collect data in order to have them and perhaps uh, make use of them whenever you will need it in the future.